horses are big, athletic, and incredibly t intelligent animals. They're wonderful creatures to work with and allow us to do some pretty amazing things. But they are capable of seriously hurting us. Sully is at least 10 times bigger than me, way faster than me, not just in running, but in reaction time. And he also has a really good memory. So all of this means that I need to have rules and boundaries set in place to keep me safe and to keep our relationship stable. I'm not being mean by setting limits and it's not a foreign concept to him. The horses have rules and regulations within the herd as well. Mares will teach their foals at a very early age these horse rules and every other horse that they meet will reinforce them the rest of their lives. We humans just tap into this knowledge and use it ourselves. It's not really a hard concept and it works with every horse. It doesn't matter the age, the breed, the sex, or what discipline the horse is used for. The basic rules and regulations or boundaries are the same across the board. But you must be very black and white when it comes to the rules. There's no room for gray area or debating. You've got to be consistent or else it won't work. Because remember, they've got really good memory. So, if I'm going to be safe in relation to the horse, I need to be the leader and he needs to be the follower. So horses have a hierarchy within the herd from bottom to top. Horses that are higher are the ones that call the shots. That means that they get to do things like eat and drink first or move other horses around. So that can either be the whole herd or just an individual horse. And it's that key point that we use to help us be in charge. So if you want to boil it down to kind of one simple concept, it's this. Whoever moves the most loses. What do I mean by that? I mean if I cause you to move your feet and I control where you go or where you don't go, I'm higher than you in the pecking order. We use this all the time with our horses and probably the most you know, basic thing that comes to everybody's mind is lunging. Well, if you're new to horses or you don't know what lunging is, it's basically me moving the horse around me in a circle while I stay relatively still. It can be done in a round pin or on a line. So let's have a look at a quick little demo. concept is used on the ground, under saddle, during feeding time, and pretty much any time that we interact with horse. I remember once I was working for a boarding and lesson barn that had a horse that was really hard to handle. She was big and she didn't really have a whole lot of respect for whoever was walking her. And I was relatively new to horses and it quickly became obvious that I couldn't handle this mare. Okay, we would walk out of her stall, take a few steps, and then she would throw her shoulder into me. She'd walk on top of me and would typically get loose. Okay, she did this to everyone. But she got away with it with people who weren't prepared for it or who didn't know how to set boundaries for personal space. And as I'm saying that, my sweet boy's coming into my space, aren't you? Yes. So clearly that was me. She took advantage of it. So I asked the barn owner to help me learn how to handle her. 
and she showed me what I needed to do and she let me practice on a well-behaved horse and so what I needed to do was walk a few steps with her okay stop back her wait a second and then proceed forward again so instead of going from point A to point B in one straight shot we were breaking it up into like these tiny training sessions because really what had been happening was this mare was moving me and controlling my feet and where I went okay she was coming into my space pushing me and creating a very dangerous situation having a thousand to twelve hundred pound animal push on you is not safe so what she needed was lots and lots and lots of moments where i went into her space where i moved her feet and pushed her out and it worked it actually got to the point where if i was working that day pretty much i was the one that was handling her and i also got to train the new people on how to handle her properly so I learned how to be the one in control and I reinforced it with that horse every time I handled her. Thankfully, most horses don't require such constant reminders of the rules, but they do all need limits. Okay, it protects me, it protects them, whether in the herd or when we're working together and doing something. So if we set the limits for our horses, who sets the limits for us? It's God, right? He's Lord of all, even those who reject him. So let's have a look at a passage where God was setting the expectations for Joshua, who was going to replace Moses as the leader of the Israelite people. So it's going to be found in Joshua 1 verses 7 through 8. Above all, be strong and very courageous to observe carefully the whole instruction my servant Moses commanded you. Because remember, God gave Moses the Ten Commandments, which were the rules that they were to follow. Do not turn from it to the right or to the left, so that you may have success in whatever you do. This book of instruction must stay on your mouth so that you may meditate on it day and night and be able to carefully observe everything that is written in it. Then you will prosper and have success wherever you go. So what was God saying to Joshua? Well, first, if Joshua was going to be the leader of this group of people, he needed to follow and obey God and his commands. Now this is a trait that even non-Christians can agree is a good one for a leader. Because the best leaders are humble and not above the law, but subject to it, okay? They don't create laws that only apply to the people under their command, all right? Now we have God's rules, expectations, teachings, right? It's in the Bible. So we have that, we know that, but doing it is a whole other thing, right? And really, if we're being honest, actually understanding when the Bible talks about what's right and what's wrong doesn't happen by accident, okay? So how are we imperfect people supposed to follow this perfect instruction? by keeping it before us day and night. That means reading and studying your Bible. That means spending time alone with God in prayer, okay? And it also means to profess it with your mouth. Because remember, what comes out of the lips reveals the state of your heart. So are you willing to declare God's law? Like, are you willing to tell people to their face what God says? You know, are you willing to say, for my house, the standard is God's law? If you do, God promises to bless you. That doesn't mean that life will be rainbows and butterflies. All right, because if we're honest, 
God's law is offensive to the world, but it is where our lives find true meaning and clarity, okay? It's like our obedient horses. When they respect the boundaries that we have set, there is peace between us and there's a partnership that allows us to do some pretty cool things, okay? It's the same way when we submit to God and his commands. One more thing that I would like to add. Obedience to anything else is mutiny, okay? There is ultimately just one law that matters, and that's the Bible. If you add to, subtract from, change, modernize, or in any way align yourself with any other ideas than those that are in the Bible, then you find yourself opposed to God. Probably why I like horses so much. They're very black and white, no room for gray. It's a perfect reminder of how it is with God, okay? There's no debate in God. Is he loving? Yes. Is he patient? Yes. Forgiving? Yes. But he is still ruler of all, okay? He gets to set the standard, not me or my feelings, okay? Rules kind of create this negative gut reaction from us, but really, they're there to help us live our best lives and to protect us. So be sure and don't compromise on your boundaries with your horse and ask God to help you to stay within the boundaries that he has set for you and for me. Till next week. We'll see you later, guys. Silly, I'm sorry it's so boring, but you're such a good boy. Bye, guys. You're such a good man. If you like this video, please like and subscribe to our channel. Please leave a comment if you have a prayer request. We'd love to hear from you. Till next time, guys. Have a great week. Bye, Sally!